I'm remaking Mario, you probably know of the game, and in the last video we got a bunch of the main gameplay mechanics done. Today we're going underground, and the first thing that I had to do was recolor a bunch of the environment pieces. This was honestly really easy, I just changed the orangey brown colours to a more bluish tint and then spent some time modelling out this new level. And the overworld and underground areas have to be connected in some way, and this is of course through pipes. Something that I forgot to add in the last devlog was 1-Up Mushrooms, except these aren't that exciting because they act identically to the normal shroomy boys and there isn't any life tracking or UI or anything. Okay, new content time. First up we have Piranha Plants, which I gotta say is a really weird name for a plant, but oh well. This silly little goose hides in pipes and pops out occasionally to devour anything above it. Of course, I had to draw it first in Photoshop and then put it in the game. They constantly flip between these two sprites, and to get them to come out of the pipes, I made them move between two points with some delay at each end, and whenever they're exposed, they can hurt Mario. I can actually configure their movement to go in any direction, which might make for some fun enemy ideas later on, but for now, this system works really well. Now, I'm remaking the original Super Mario Bros., but the most nostalgic Mario game for me, and probably for a lot of you, is New Super Mario Bros. for the Wii. This game, alongside Mario Kart, was my absolute childhood, and there's actually a different variant of the Piranha Plant where it shoots fireballs at Mario, and I wanted to make this as well. So the first and most crucial step is that I decapitated the plant and made its head separate from its body. This allowed me to rotate its head towards the direction of Mario, and every few seconds it'll open its mouth and shoot a fireball. You can also kind of get them to break their necks if you move too fast, so hey, that's pretty cool. For this, I also had to draw the fireball sprite, and what's interesting is that it's actually just the same thing, but rotated 90 degrees for its animation. I coso. That doesn't seem like a very cash money way to do things. Stop being lazy! Well, yeah, but they can also spam fireballs, so... Yeah. Things are getting quite hot and spicy with all of this fire, so I think it's very fitting to start on the fire flower. This power-up firstly changes Mario's appearance, and again, with some simple recolouring, this didn't take too long. The main ability, however, is that Mario can shoot fireballs to her enemies out in front of him. So whenever you press the fire button, it spawns a fireball a bit in front of the player so it doesn't mess with any collisions, and then its velocity is set in the direction that Mario is facing. I decided to use Unity's built-in physics system to bounce the fireballs around the place, and it made it just a little bit janky, but it does the job, and of course the fireballs will kill any enemies that they come in contact with. On the topic of power-ups, we cannot forget the superstar. Starman, I don't know, but we all know that it's magic, and whenever Mario touches it, he becomes invincible and changes to these crazy psychedelic colours. Now in the original Super Mario Bros. game, there was actually just different looking sprites that Mario would flip between, but I felt way too lazy to actually draw all of these and implement them into the game. So instead, I decided to do something that hurt my brain way more than it should have, and that was shaders. I'll be honest, I haven't used shaders a whole lot, and I still don't entirely know how they work, but I eventually got something that looked semi-decent, and the functionality for the invincibility was really simple. Just for some time period, Mario looks like this and can kill anything by touching it. Nice. What's great about shaders is that they apply to any size and shape of sprite, so I don't have to individually draw a bunch of different stages, I just let the maths play out. And talking about dinosaurs, I love Yoshi, and I really wanted to add him into the game. Now I know what you're gonna say. Oh, I Coco, Yoshi wasn't in the original game. <coughs> Please stop talking. So I drew the Yoshi sprite based off of Super Mario World for a bit of a reference, and yeah, it was kind of difficult. Yoshi's a weird character, he's pretty curvy. Not in that way. And it took me a good while to get the shape right. Well, I say right, but I mean I just sort of had enough and wanted to move on. Now don't think that everything I do is correct the first time. Trust me, it's not. This is what I started out with. Obviously, there was a lot of work to do. To start with, I got Yoshi's animations to play instead of Mario's, and this was already looking a whole lot better. But there had to be some way to hop on and off Yoshi, so what I did was constantly check beneath Mario's feet, and if he was right above him, he would snap into position, and instead of controlling Mario, you would be controlling Yoshi. And this movement wasn't very different, except we all know that this dinosaur man has a very aesthetically pleasing tongue. So going back into Photoshop, I drew a few more sprites of Yoshi opening his mouth, and um, mm -hmm. I, I have regrets. But what good is having a great tongue if you can't use it? Yoshi kinda does like a Kirby and just consumes whatever is in front of him, so I add a little collider to the end of the tongue to check for enemies. If it encountered an enemy, it would pick them up and drag them towards Yoshi, completely destroying them in the process. 
And before anyone asks, yes, you can sacrifice Yoshi into the void, otherwise there'd be no point in playing the game at all. Spiky boys. I know these spiky little boys don't usually hang out underground, but I think they fit here, and they're really cute, and they have triangles, and we all know that every triangle is a love triangle when you love triangles. These chapos act very similarly to the Goombas, but you cannot jump on top of them, again because of all their spikiness. These guys are also just very fun to spam and cause chaos. Also, Buzzy Beetles, not as spicy as the Spikies, but still just as stylish. Just like the Coopers, they can go back into their shell when faced with any sort of danger, which sounds a bit like me in social situations, and then you can kick them to kill a giant horde of sentient mushrooms, which I only did once, and it wasn't even my fault, okay? They started it. I was just minding my own business, and they decided to attack me. 